Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Cobert, and today's episode is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, O.J. Howard, tight end out of Alabama. Uh, you, you look at his production first. He had 73.17 in terms of his uh, passing yardage market share. It's Pro Bowl level. It's not all pro level. Uh, the, this is all the way back to the 1963 NFL draft class. Almost every single multiple All-Pro tight end since that draft class scored at least at 80 when it comes to this metric, and O.J. Howard missed that mark. But he did hit the Pro Bowl level mark, so that's that's decent. That's a good thing. Uh, then we come to his athleticism, which is where the this is the only area where the red flags kind of show up. Uh, explosiveness, he scored a 26.52 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 93.78 in terms of speed for his size, and 40 and 96.30. When it comes to flexibility for his size. He has elite speed, elite flexibility, but doesn't have elite uh, explosiveness. And based on all my data that I've collected, every single multiple All-Pro tight end and multiple Pro Bowl tight end had at least a 35.5 explosion score. Uh, so if O.J. Howard were to become a multiple All-Pro, multiple Pro Bowl tight end, he would be the first of his kind when it comes to this metric. Every single player, whether you're talking about Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham, Jason Witten, uh, Antonio Gates even. I mean, every single tight end that was multiple All-Pro, multiple Pro Bowl was significantly more explosive than O.J. Howard when it comes to this metric. And it's something that showed up on film because on film he wasn't particularly impressive when it came to yards after the catch. He wasn't a very powerful player after the catch. And a lot of this speaks to his lack of explosive lower body strength, which is a metric that uses the vertical and the broad jump. So... I don't think it's a surprise to say that he didn't do well in terms of explosiveness, but I do think that this kind of caps his overall upside potential. I would say best case scenario, he could become a Pro Bowl, a Pro Bowl outlier because he is such a big player and has these impressive sort of tools and stuff like that when it comes to his profile. But if you think that this is a guy that's going to become a future Hall of Famer or a multiple All-Pro player that's going to take over the league, I just disagree based on his data profile. I think he's more likely to disappoint what people expect of him than the other way around when it comes to his overall profile. Uh, so the Howard pick isn't exactly terrible. He's going to be a long-term starter to potentially better because of cer certain athleticism traits, but he's not exactly a slam dunk perfect data profile kind of guy when it comes to his overall profile. And then the next pick we have is Justin Evans, defensive safety out of Texas A&M. When it comes with his production, he was 76.55 in terms of solo tackle market share, 90.32 in terms of interception market share, and 57.1 now when it comes to pass deflection uh, market share. His age is fine. His overall production is fine. His athleticism is where he gets into some trouble. Only scored 91.15 when it comes to explosiveness and 26.02 when it comes to speed. His speed score is not all pro level or pro bowl level. And he did not participate in the short shoulder and three cone, which makes sense because on film, he played really high. He was stiff. It affected his ability to tackle guys in space as well because of that lack of flexibility. And I just think that that's, that's just the main problem with him. I think overall, when you look at his profile, you're looking at a starting safety. But he's a starting strong safety that is going to have issues when it comes to coverage. He's going to have issues when it comes to tackling in space. He's just going to be a guy that's going to struggle a bit because of that lack of flexibility when it comes to his profile. And uh, production-wise, his production wasn't indicative of a multiple All-Pro player either. Pro Bowl is potential, but a little bit off from that spot. So I would expect Justin Evans to become a starter, but I wouldn't expect him to become a really special player. Uh, the next pick in the draft, we have Chris Godwin, wide receiver out of Penn State. Probably one of my favorite picks of this draft class. Uh, Production-wise, he had a 89.64 out of 100, which is five-time All-Pro level when it comes to his uh, passing yardage market share. He's also really young with a 97.51 age score. And when it comes to his athleticism, he was 83.61 in terms of explosiveness, 92.23 in terms of speed, and 91.66 when it comes to flexibility to, for his size. Comparing him to Amari Cooper and Odo Beckham Jr., this is just how they compare when it comes to their speed and flexibility. Both of these wide receivers are very similar when it comes to their production, when it comes to their age, when it comes to their athleticism. 
I'm not saying that Chris Godwin is going to be the next Odo Beckham Jr. or Mark Cooper, but what I am saying is that he has the profile and all the traits of a special, special wide receiver. And I would not be surprised if he ended up becoming a multiple all-pro wide receiver, or at least a multiple Pro Bowl wide receiver, based on his age, based on his production, and based on his athleticism traits. So I think this is a very good pick. I think this is a pick that's actually going to pay more dividends than people realize down the road uh, because of all the impressive indicators that he has. Uh, so good pick. One of my favorites. Uh, then we come to linebacker Kendall Beckwith from LSU. Production-wise, he scored 72.47 out of 100, which isn't Pro Bowl level or All-Pro or all pro level. Uh, overall production for his schedule is 80.64, and age was 75.74. He didn't participate in any other types of testing uh, because he was injured during the process, so I can't really say one way or another about his athleticism, if it's good or bad or whatever. But what I can say is, at the very least, you have a potential starter here when it comes to his production and his, pr and his production, particularly against the SEC. So I think best case scenario with Kendall Beckwith, if, if he becomes healthy, is you have at least a starting linebacker. But I think Pro Bowl and All Pro level stuff is off the table. Even if he tested well as an athlete, that stuff would be off the table when it comes to linebackers because linebacker is one of those positions where the solo tackle market share really sets the overall upside for players even if they test well as athletes uh, so that's the only thing I could say about Kendall Beckwith is that he could be, end, up be a, end up being a starter or he could also end up being kind of eh uh, overall because of his production uh, then we come to the second one of my favorite the second favorite pick of the draft for the uh, Tampa, Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Jeremy McNichols running back out of Boise State uh, Production-wise, he scored 89.88 out of 100, which is really impressive. Five, that's five-time All-Pro level as well for a running back. Age-wise, he scored at 94.8 when it came to his age score. And when it comes to his athleticism, he had 78.77 in terms of explosiveness, 83.85 when it comes to speed, and 84.5 now when it comes to flexibility for his size. He is by far one of the most athletic running backs in the draft class. What a, he's right up there with Dr. Foreman. He's right up there with Joe Mixon when it comes to athleticism. And I think when you look at his production and you look at these other sort of things, I think there's potential that he could be very, very good based on these other factors. The only major question mark is with fumbles. Uh, I think D.P. Brugler did a study on fumbles and uh, some of the guys who had the highest fumble rates. And McNichols was one of those guys. But other than that, other than the fumble rate, which is a legitimate concern because coaches hate fumbles. Fumbles lead to losing football games. Uh, any, I don't have the study done yet, but most of the studies that I've seen when it comes to turnovers, which makes sense, is that the more turnovers you have, the less likely, less likely you are to win games. That's why coaches hate running backs to turn the football over. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen with McNichols. But Overall, everything's pointing to good things with McNichols in terms of his production and in terms of his athleticism. Then to finish off the draft class, we have uh, Steve Nose Tackle from USC. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. Uh, Production-wise, he had 58.53 in terms of solo tackle market share, 8.42 in terms of sack market share, and 9.96 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. And age-wise, his age score was literally 0.91 was his age score. He's literally almost 25 years old. So that's how old he's going to be when the draft starts. Well, not the draft, excuse me, the season. Uh, and overall production was only 21.33. So he's not productive. He's 25 years old when the season starts. And when it comes to athleticism, he scored 32.80 when it comes to explosiveness, 32.59 when it comes to speed, and 47.30 when it comes to flexibility for his size. If Steve becomes a long-term starter, I would be very surprised because when you have a guy who misses production marks uh, and on top of that has age at 25 years old and on top of that has significantly below average production when it comes to explosive speed and flexibility I don't care if you're playing nose tackle or what position you're playing. That's just not gonna That's just not gonna work guys And I know what some of you might be thinking. Well, nose tackles aren't supposed to be productive blah, blah. Listen, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna show you all the all the very good nose tackles where you're talking about Don Terry, Don Terry Poe if you're talking about Holoti Nata, if you're talking about uh, Vince Wilfork, 
great nose tackles. Linville, Joseph, whatever. All those guys had above average production. Steve doesn't have above average production, which makes sense because of his athleticism traits. So at the very least, I don't think this pick is really going to work out for the Bucks. It is a later round pick, but I do think that it's a waste of opportunity to, to get a player that could be better for them when it comes to that. But final grades about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft. I think it was a solid draft. I think you get uh, at least three starters in O.J. Howard, Justin Evans, and Kendall Beckwith. I think all three of those guys have a pretty good shot of becoming long-term starters for you. And I think when it comes to guys like Chris Godwin and Jeremy McNichols, those are guys that have really, really high chances of becoming multiple Pro Bowl or better uh, when it comes to their profile. I think Godwin probably has the better chance just because of the competition that he faced. You know, he played one of the toughest schedules in college football at Penn State in the Big Ten. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols didn't really do that. He played against Boise State competition. But I do think that when you look at this draft class and you look at the, the first five picks they had, I could see all five of those picks becoming starters for you guys and at least two of those guys becoming significant contributors. Uh, for you guys, when, especially when it comes to Chris Godwin. So this was a good, this is a very good draft. And I think uh, uh, you know, as far as addressing needs and stuff like that, I don't really want to get into that because that's just a whole different, that's a, that's a different show. But I do think when it comes to getting players in this draft with the picks you had, I think you had a pretty good batting average this year when it comes to your draft. And the, and the Bucks have been doing well in terms of their draft classes, in terms of getting guys to to uh to fit roles they haven't exactly hit it out of the park in every draft but they definitely get players that can come in and become starters so that's the one positive i can say is i think this is a draft with a lot of starters and some players that can also become high impact players long term so to conclude you know my name is james coburn you can follow my blog at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you want more content like this, if you like content, you know, like this and all that other kind of stuff to support the channel, leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot when you guys do that, you know, sharing the video with, you know, anybody, you know, blogs, friends, family, whatever, you know, sharing this video was, is also very helpful in terms of getting my name out there and, and doing stuff like that. Uh, and again, if you have comments or questions or whatever, be sure to comment below i'm welcome to answer any question i mean all the stuff that i'm presenting today is not stuff that i just made up it's stuff that i've been collecting for over four years of data collection when it comes to all this information so i just decided to present it on youtube uh, just to get the information out there so people can uh, can see it and analyze it and stuff like that so again thank you so much for listening to the show and i will do another video very soon Peace.